Okay. Hi folks. Hi folks, it's good to be with you. Matthew 25. Matthew 25 says, Then shall the bridegroom of heaven be lifted unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterwards came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. You know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. You know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Yes, yes. The Son of Man comes. Are you ready for him? I am, yes. Are you ready for him, my bro? Yes, You're right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you, man. Yeah, it's been a long time. Man. Okay, okay, okay. All right, God bless you. The Son of Man cometh. One day, the Son of Man comes. Jesus Christ comes. There are wise virgins and foolish virgins to the wedding. The wise virgins, they had oil in their lamps to get ready for the wedding. The foolish virgins, they had no oil in their lamps and they couldn't get to the wedding because they didn't have enough oil. The oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The oil is a symbol of those who are born again, walking in the Spirit of God, and those who are born of the flesh, walking of the flesh. Jesus said, flesh gives birth to flesh, the spirit gives birth to spirit. And you cannot get into the kingdom of God unless you are a spiritual man or woman. And that means you have to be born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God comes in your heart and gives you a new heart to love God, to worship God, to adore God. But if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, then you cannot get into the kingdom of God. You need to be born again born again of the Holy Ghost. One day this world is going to end. One day there will be a day of judgment. One day there will be a wrath to come. And when that wrath comes, when that judgment comes, when the wrath of God comes, will you be able to deal with it? Will you be able to deal with it? The wrath of God is coming. God is a fire of holiness. God is a fire of purity. And God on judgment day will purify that which is evil by sending it to hell. The fire of God is a consuming fire. And God will not look upon evil. He will not look upon that which is wrong. But in his fire and in his holiness, he judged his son. And his son Jesus Christ died on that cross and took the wrath that you deserve. When he died on that cross, he died as a thief, but he never thieved. He died as a murderer, but never murdered. He died as a rapist, but never raped. He died on that cross on your behalf. 
He was crushed by the Father and the Father bruised him and the wrath of God fell upon him for you. Amen. And if you Amen. do not come to the blood of Jesus, Amen. if you don't come to the blood of Jesus, <laughs> if you don't come to the blood of Jesus, you're going to be lost. You're going to be lost forever and ever Amen. in outer darkness. Will there be weeping and gnashing of teeth? The wrath of God is coming, oh. coming upon all those who sin, oh. coming on those who rebel against God. Oh. But Christ loved you, oh, and man. Christ shed his blood on that cross. He died on that cross and gave his life for you on that cross. But if you reject him, you cast yourself into outer darkness, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said, there is a hell. He said there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He said there'll be eternal punishment. He said the wrath will come. But you can escape the wrath of God by knowing that Christ took your wrath. Christ died on our cross. Christ took the wrath that you deserve. You're, you can be drugged today by materialism, by sex, by drugs, by fame, by power, by philosophy, by religion and they drug you, and they blind you, and they drag you down to hell with the devil and his demons. Bullshit. And there, come and debate me then, bro. See, he said bullshit, but wouldn't debate me. That's your atheism today, folks. Your atheism's anti-intellectual. They can't debate to save their life. Christ died and took the wrath. Any atheist here want to debate me? Come and have a debate, come on. See, they can't debate. Come on there, bro. You want to debate? Are hey, you an atheist, sir? Uh, I can't now, now, this is an this is an intellectually honest guy. Respect to you, sir. Thank you. That, 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 is, that, I can I just can I just say? Can I just say? Agnostic means you believe in God. Pardon? Agnostic means you believe in God. What? 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 This guy is an intellectually honest guy, and I have a great respect for you because you're open and honest. So I respect that. So my name's Jason. Uh, uh, so, do you want to explain what agnosticism is? Uh, well, essentially, an agnostic is someone who believes in proof. Okay. That's that's good. Could you pan around? The, the... So, why is it you don't believe that Jesus Christ died for you, bro? Well, I mean, essentially, if you look at it historically speaking. Yes, there may have been a man who was quite clever. Yes, he may have lived around 0 BC. Yes, all that sort of thing. Essentially, what irks me is it's more a concept of if one man dies for everyone's sins, or, or sorry, that essentially we were born with sin due to um, obviously Adam and Eve and that sort of thing. Man was born with sin. I understand this whole concept of, you know, uh, great power um, and all that sort of thing, but there's also the same argument of, so humans made dolls in our image, so if God made us, then we are nothing but dolls to him. That's a good point. Uh, we're saying about God made us in our image. If we made a doll, uh, and we make a doll in our image, we're, we're just like dolls before God. When it says in Genesis, God made us in our image, the image of God is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And within the Trinity is love. And we are made in God's image to love, to be in relationship with one another. So when you look at reality and human beings, you see that they, they, there's a desire for relationship. But that is the image of that we're made in the image of God, to have this relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I really appreciate your intellectual honesty and, and you're a credit to agnosticism, all right? So I'm going to ask a question about Jesus. When Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life in John 14, and when he said in John, uh, Mark chapter 10, I give my life a ransom for many, as an agnostic, what do you think about Jesus' claims that he came to die for us as a savior, and that he was the son of God when he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life? What's your position as an agnostic? Well, the likelihood is it's a lie because the, the thing is about Christianity in general is it's one of the newest religions. So if you go far enough back, obviously you've got Islam. Uh, even if you go as far back as the Egyptians, there are countless prophets that have been told 
uh, that were born on the 25th of December, uh, were born by a virgin, all this sort of thing. It's, it's a repeated thing over time. So I'd encourage anyone who, who, is, who believes this sort of thing is true just to go on Google and, and Google it, man. It's not hard, like... Let me finish, let me finish. I'm, I'm used to talking. It's all right. Let me finish. Brother, brother, brother. Let me finish. So, he's saying there are many other prophets, right? But no other person ever claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No one can come to the Father but through me. And he's backing it up by number one, fulfilling prophecies, 300 prophecies, and number two, that he died and rose again. And because he rose again, his claim that he is the Son of God is true. Now here's the question, as an agnostic, what evidence, what evidence do you have, what evidence do you have, could you, could you just come in a bit closer, bro? What evidence do you have that Jesus Christ did not die and did not rise again as an agnostic? Have you got any evidence as an agnostic? That's not what you are asking. No, 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 We're having a conversation. It's okay, it's okay. It's about Jesus. My friend, my friend, let me finish, let me finish. We're having a conversation. We're having a conversation. Okay. We're just filming here. We're having an amicable conversation. So my question to you is, and I really appreciate this. Um, what evidence do you have that Jesus didn't die and didn't rise again? And if you could tell us just for a few minutes. What evidence do you have that what, he did? I, I asked you that question. What evidence, what evidence do you have that he did? I don't need evidence because the burden of proof is on you. The burden of proof lies on the person who makes the statement. You're stating that Jesus existed and died for our sins. You therefore need proof of that. I don't have to prove to you that he didn't. What right do you have to come in and say your religion is right? What right do you have to stand here and preach to all these people that your religion is right and everyone else's is wrong? I'm, I'm agnostic because I don't believe in one true creator. I don't, I, don't, I, don't like, I don't appreciate you standing here in my city, in my town where I live and telling other people that their religion are wrong. And you're entitled to your opinion. Man, you asked for it, man. You asked me to come and debate you. So what it's a, it's a, a, we're having an intellectual discussion. Yeah, and, and I'm not attacking you. Okay, so okay, just, just, just don't worry, don't worry. No, in, in a second, in a second, in a second. We're having a, a, a fair conversation, treating each other with respect, yeah? I'll give you some evidence that Jesus died on the cross, right? Josephus, a Jewish historian, 90 AD, let me finish, let me finish. 90 AD said that Jesus died on the Pontius Pilate. A Roman historian, 90 AD, Tacitus said that Jesus died on the Pontius Pilate. Now when you have enemy attestation, it's solid evidence that that actually happened, right? So using historical inquiry and method, we can show that he died. Now let's give some evidence that he rose from the dead. Joseph of Arimathea buried Jesus, right? No scholar of any reputation, of any real reputation, would disagree that it was Joseph of Arimathea buried him. So if he died, he was buried. Now, Luther's testimony was not valued in the time of Jesus. The first people that are reported to have seen Jesus are women. In starting a new religion, you would not use women for eyewitness testimony. But, they say it was the women. So I've given you three pieces of evidence. Number one, enemy attestation, Josephus Tatissus, he died. Number two, that he was buried in a tomb, Josephus, uh, 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 Joseph of Arimathea, no scholar of any repute really disputes that. And then thirdly, thirdly, that women saw Jesus and you won't start a new religion with women. Now you as an agnostic, right, it's no good you saying, oh, you've got to provide evidence. We're looking at history. If someone says that Hitler did not kill six million Jews, you as a historian, have to say, no, I have evidence that he killed six million Jews. It's no good saying, I don't believe Jesus rose from the dead, you prove it to me. What do you say? Do you say he's a prophet? What do you say? I say he died and rose again. Go for it, bro. Well, my only point about that is you're saying, so what, these, these records were recorded in what, 90 AD? Uh, Josephus, 90 AD. 90 AD, right, so that was, that was almost 2,000 years ago. The Holocaust happens 70 years ago 2000 years versus 70 years that that's even for I'm, I'm not a historian i don't i don't have any sort of thing like that but i know that's even further away than a tertiary source 
it's, it's, a ter it's a tertiary source that you're using to try and say something was correct, but it, it can't... The way, the way the Western world has developed over the last 2,000 years has entirely been Catholic-based. The, the church in Rome, they've rewritten history books. It's been proven they've rewritten history books before. You can't, you can't, no, you can't do and say these sort of things. Uh, the, uh, uh, this is the last bit, and then I'll give you one minute to say your last bit, yeah? And then you can come in and say something, yeah? Okay. <laughs> we're just having a debate, and we're filming. Yeah, we're, we're, don't worry, yeah? Right. This idea that the Catholic Church dotted anything, don't disagree with that, I totally agree, yeah? When, the, when Catholics got in power, and they got political power, they dotted things. But, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 7, it says this, I received this of first importance. And these words, let, let me just finish, let me just finish, of first importance. And this is a rabbinic term that comes within two years after Jesus, right? So what that means is we have evidence that Jesus died and rose again within two years of Jesus' uh, death and resurrection. And no scholar, no scholar in the academic world would dispute that, right? That we have early source material evidence from a historian's perspective. Now in this debate that we've had, I've tackled it from a historian's point of view. So you as an agnostic have to deal with it from history. Yeah? Now the reason why we're doing it, I'm going to finish and then I'll let you get the view the last word. We believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. We believe we can defend it by evidence, but also it's a life thing that changes you. This guy's been preaching today, this guy believes in Jesus, that, that Christ can change you and give you a new life. Now we believe, we believe that he is the way, the truth and the life, yeah? So I'm going to give you one second, one minute, to finish, right? But I'm not forcing anything, I've invited you to debate, and I hope that you've seen in this debate that we've had, a Christian with an agnostic, that we've done it in an amicable way, in, 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 in a fair way. And, and that's what it's all about, bro. At the end of the day, I might not agree with you, and you might not agree with me, but I respect you, and I respect your belief, yeah? So I'm going to give you one minute, and then these guys want to talk to you, bro. Christmas. Okay. Christmas has got okay. nothing okay. to do with okay. Jesus. It is a Babylonian okay. celebration that was here well before oh, the time of Jesus was born. Oh, I still think it's good. Oh, so, I'd like to see you too.